Good evening. Welcome to our Isham Shares second webinar for what every business owner in Isham Township should know. My name is Stacy Webb. I am the current Deputy Director for Community Development, and I'm so happy that you are here with us tonight. This is our uh, second part of a full year of, of, a, of webinar series. Um, we will have multiple speakers throughout the year, but tonight we have some very special speakers that will share information with you. I'm gonna go over our agenda right now so, so that you know what to expect. So whether or not you're listening to this tonight or whether you are listening to this at a later date, we thank you for your time and attention. Um, after I'm finished speaking, I am, will turn it over to our mayor of Eastern Township, Jacqueline BC. Then I will come back and go over our guidelines for this information session. I will also go over our purpose and our mission statement. And then I will introduce our wonderful speakers that have given their time to us tonight. I will then come back and go over some next steps. So now I'm gonna stop sharing and turn this over to our mayor of Eastern Township, Mayor Jacqueline BC. Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I wanna give a special welcome to our guest speakers and thank them for their time and talent that they're sharing with us this evening. I know we're gonna have so much information for all of you. Um, we've been stressing and I thank Stacy for all of her hard work in, in promoting with our Evesham Economic Advisory Council uh, to support our local businesses. So we're, we're out here trying to support our local businesses through a very challenging time. And I know that through our county support and through the Chambers of Commerce, we'll, we'll be able to give some valuable information tonight as we work through these challenging seasons. So thank you all for joining us. I hope you have you learned some great information. And once again, thank you to our speakers for joining us tonight as well. Thank you, Mayor VC. Now um, that we've had our, our wonderful mayor speak, I wanted to go over our guidelines for this information session so that you know exactly what to expect, exactly what's going to happen. This is an information um, presentation. It will be a recorded webinar. And a copy of this document that I'm going over with you right now will be on our Eastern Township website. We will also share this on our social media platform. So you'll see this on our, web, our Facebook page tomorrow. Questions can be submitted via the chat function tonight. And we will make sure that they are answered in our frequently asked questions page. So I will take those questions down I will ask our presenters and then I will make sure that on this presentation, when it is sent back to you um, or when it was shared with you, that you will see those questions answered. Additionally, I will try to do my very best to email you directly if I have your email address. Each presenter, however, will provide their own contact information. So you will be free to contact them with the information they provide tonight. Additional questions can always be sent to me directly. My information will be uh, listed at the end of this session so that if you have any questions about this presentation, about the webinar series, I can ask, they can be asked and answered on our frequently asked questions page as well. Now, I am so happy to go over our purpose and our mission. In 2021, the Community Development Department of the Isham Township Office wants to focus on sharing information with our businesses on a consistent basis. So it is our goal that we share information that is designed to help keep our local businesses open and to keep them prosperous and growing. We know these are difficult times. These are times unlike any other, but now we are going to continue to share with you information as we get it that will help benefit you. It might be financial based, it might be non-financial based, but it will be consistently shared with you with our speakers, such as those that are here tonight, 
or previously previous speakers that have been on our webinars or that will be on our future webinars. So we hope that you continue to check in with our social media posts and that you um, continue to reach out to us if you have any questions and check our website for updates. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, um, Commissioner Felicia Hobson, who is the director of the Burlington County Commissioner's Board. Director Hobson continually promotes economic development for Burlington County. I'm sure you've seen her on social media, you've seen her in the newspaper, I'm sure you've seen her picture everywhere because it is her goal to motivate and to continue to strive to bring economic growth to Burlington County. She started with this, um, with revitalizing Shop Burlington County First initiative. Tonight, she will share with us more information about Shop Burlington County First. She will talk about help loan, uh, the help loan program. She will go over information for small businesses and Route 130 loan programs through Burlington County um, Bridge Commission and Burlington County Library Resources. And finally, she will go over some 2021 initiatives, such as Restaurant Week, Winter Holidays in July, Small Business Assistance, and Burlington County Business Hub. Our second speaker, they will... Um, and these speakers will go right one right after the other. Our second speaker is Christina Renna. Christina Renna is the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce for Southern New Jersey. The Chamber of Commerce for Southern New Jersey, or you'll hear us say CCSNJ, offers a variety of services and information for businesses. Tonight, she will provide an overview of the CCSNJ SNJ and its services, including the resources and programs available for businesses. She will also provide an overview of state assistance programs for small businesses and any updates along with the impact of 2022 or year in 2022 state budget and how it will have what it will have on our business operations. And finally, she will provide an overview of federal assistance programs available for our small businesses. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Director Felicia Hobson um, to start her presentation. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone doing? So this is an awesome uh, web series that I'm excited to be a part of. Um, as Stacy said, I am the Burlington County Commissioner Director for the Board of Commissioners. We all know that 2020 was extremely challenging, um, but we want to put into perspective with you today how challenging it was for our local businesses. So we realized that local businesses had to make several adjustments, right? Too many were forced to close. We knew that. We saw that. Some were just barely surviving. And from the very start of the crisis, our board prioritized helping our local businesses here in Burlington County. So as you can see what Stacey has shown you, we have several initiatives that we want to focus on and trying to help our businesses get back to where they were, get back to being fully productive at 100%. So what we want to do first is we want to focus on our Shop Burlington First initiative. Why is this important? Well, we feel as though if we can keep our residents' dollars, if we can keep our residents spending their dollars in Burlington County, not only will it help our small businesses, but it will help on so many other levels. You, you don't realize how it can help with that local business owner and whatever tax bracket they're in. It can help with local school taxes. And obviously it can help with local property taxes. So we wanna keep our money right here in Burlington County. So Shop Burlington County First is our initiative that we're focusing on. And me and several of, several of my commissioners, I'm sorry, my colleagues have visited other businesses in lieu of trying to support them and regain 
um, what we expect them to be back at 100%. So this is a, such an important initiative. And at the end of the day, it's really a fun initiative. It's really good to go around and see local businesses. A lot of them are family owned and just see how everybody connects with their community members and how we really do have so much in common with our neighbors. So shop Burlington County first, you have the opportunity to focus on restaurants. You have the opportunity to focus on regular stores and some businesses where, who just provide services. There's a lot of photography businesses out there who suffered during 2020. How can we help those businesses? So that's what our initiative is about. It's not just about going and spending your money somewhere, but it's about connecting with the community and sharing that information with your neighbor so we can continue this on a regular basis. It's extremely important and I hope everyone takes it into consideration. We wanna highlight as many businesses as possible. And I know there's a lot going on. Burlington County has over 450 residents. So there's a lot of businesses and for Esham being one of our biggest towns in Burlington County, wow, right? Most of us who are driving down Route 70, Route 73 don't even realize that we're in one of the biggest towns in our county. So we would like your help to promote some of our small businesses. So if you know of a small business or if you are a small business owner, if you're interested and you want to share your information with us so we can share it on our social media platforms, please send us an email and the email address, and we'll make sure you have this at the end as well. The email address to our public information office is news at co.burlington.nj us. So before I move on, I want to introduce you to um, Liz Verna. Liz is our economic development director. Some of you have already met Liz, but Liz has been doing a really good job with focusing on our loan program. It's very important that our residents and our business owners understand about the loans that, the Bur that Burlington County has to offer. So Liz is going to talk to you all about the loan program and how some of them work. Liz? Thank you, Director Hobson. Um, uh, I am Liz Verna, Director of the Economic Development Department. I'm gonna share my screen right here. Oops. Sorry. Yes, of course this worked just fine while I was practicing and now I'm having trouble. Okay. All right, um, can you all see that? All right, okay. So um, what we wanna talk about tonight um, is assisting local businesses through this program, the COVID Health Emergency Loan Program, better known as these HELP loans. They are zero interest loans. They are for any uh, business in Burlington County, up to $50,000 in zero interest financing, the application fees have been waived for new loans. They are repaid over 10 years. And um, the, there was a total of $660,000 in Federal CARES Act funding that was secured by the Burlington County Bridge Commission's Economic Development Office. Uh, the Bridge Commission is responsible for administering this program. So the loans, they're capped at $50,000. They can be used for business-related purchases, uh, payroll, other expenses, improvements like PPE. Um, there are no closing costs. Um, jobs must be retained for the term of the loan. The maximum payback period is 10 years um, and borrowers must have sufficient collateral in business or personal real estate to secure the loans. So the county approved the first four zero interest loans to local businesses impacted by uh, the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Um, they just did this in January. The four businesses are the Riverton Health and Fitness Center in Riverton, the Team Builders Plus, which is a Marlton based company that specializes in corporate training and executive coaching, 
uh, law offices of Stephanie Streeter, which is a small uh, law firm in Mount Holly with just one, <laughs> Stephanie is, is the law firm, <laughs> uh, one lawyer firm, uh, and Oracle Hearing Aid Center in Cinnaminson. Each of those, um, each of those uh, businesses received $50,000 loans uh, under, the, um, uh, under the conditions that we talked about. Um, Team Builders Plus, I will tell you, um, had to, they used to do all of their training in person. So they had to scramble and switch it up and do everything online. Um, had to let a lot of their staff go and have been able to bring some back, but this will enable them to, um, you know, stay solvent. Uh, same thing with the law firm. Stephanie um, had one employee had to let the person go and is kind of, you know, doing everything until she can get back on her feet. Um, same thing with the Oracle Hearing Aid uh, Center. As you can imagine, um, they still have had to pay rent and equipment repair, advertising, other costs, um, when a lot of their uh, older folks that came there for services uh, were no longer coming because of COVID-19. So, so um, if, you know, we work with, we do work with commercial realtors, state entities and municipalities, um, they can assist with zoning and planning to attract prospective businesses and work with state to promote incentive programs. If there's any questions that you have, um, we ask you to first check out our website, bcbridges.org backslash COVID-19 resources. You'll see uh, four questions that you can answer there. If you can, if you can answer positively to those questions, you will see another screen that will ask you to provide some information and you'll get a link to um, an application for the loan. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us at the phone number on the screen, 609-265-5055. Thanks so much. Thank you, Liz. That was some great information. So I know that was a lot of information that we shared and it is my hope that you guys will check out the website and look and see if there's something that we can help you with. We are here to help our residents. We want you to use, utilize us as best you can. The next thing I would like to talk to you all about is our Burlington County Library. So I know, and we have one of our library branches right there in Asham. Library, the Burlington County Library has so many important resources. I'm not quite sure our residents are paying attention to the vast amount of information that's available um, at our library and of course on our library's website. The resources, particularly for businesses, we have so many resources for new and um, existing businesses to help grow the businesses. It's extreme amount of information. I can't even share it with you all here, but I do want to focus on the fact that there is a specific women's business center. So as we end Black History Month in February and we go in to March, which is Women's History Month, let us focus on our women business owners, right? Um, just like uh, Liz just talked about, we gave an, a loan to a, a woman who's an attorney in Mount Holly. So if we focus just on our women business owners and just imagine if we can get them to flourish and build their companies to where they really could be. So just those little few things that we can do by sharing the resources that we have. Well, the Business Center at Burlington County Library supports women. So there's a bunch of information for women to go and utilize, whether they want to focus on resources to help with quality financial information, or if they want to get some general business information. The Burlington County Library has resources specifically for women. Um, not trying to be biased, but I am biased. So I want to support women as much as possible. And as we go into Women's History Month, it's very important that we share this information and we let our other business owners know that we're here for you. And we know it takes a lot of time, but if you put in the right amount of time, you will get the expected profit. You will get the expected production. So we're asking you to come partner with us. And even if you just want to share the information, if you want to just pop in and get some information from our local staff at our libraries, that will be half the battle because we want to get the word out. So we're asking that you assist us in making sure that everyone is aware of all of the resources that we have right at the Burlington County Library. And for each e share residents, you don't even have to leave town because you have a library right there in your backyard. 
So the next thing I wanna talk about is where we go from here. So as we are leaving 2020, we know that we're still in a pandemic. It is our hope that hopefully by the spring, late fall, we'll get back to some normalcy. Well, until then, we know that we have to stay masked up. We know we have to continue to social distance. But what we will try to do here in Burlington County is bring back some normalcy to our, to our business space. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring back Restaurant Week. So for those of you who have been paying attention, in 2019, we had Restaurant Week. It was around the third week in October. It was so much fun. So I even visited some restaurants with some of my girlfriends, some of my sorority sisters. So it's a great opportunity for you to reconnect with family and friends. And in my case, reconnect with some sorority sisters. So if you have a favorite restaurant, haven't been able to go sit down and just hang out with that restaurant owner or meet your friends there, we are going to promote that this coming summer because we think it's important to reconnect with our community members with our families and most importantly support our businesses so restaurant week is coming so stay tuned for that we will have that all over social media we will promote 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 and we will ask you to do the same go to your favorite restaurant go to your favorite store tell your neighbor tell your church friend whomever you can share it with it's coming so stay tuned the next thing we're going to focus on is because things have been so difficult, particularly in 2020, and we're trying to transition back to normalcy, we're going to flip things a little and we're going to do winter holidays in July. Why are we doing winter holidays in July? We're doing winter holidays in July because this past December wasn't the best December, wasn't the best Christmas. So we want to have it a little warmer. We want to be outside. So we're going to do winter holidays in July. So we're going to ask that you stay tuned for more details for that initiative. But I'm excited about that initiative. One of our um, directors came up with that initiative, Charlene Webster, and I thought it was a great idea. And I said, yep, let's get there. Let's get in there and let's make it happen. So Burlington County is always thinking about what's next and how can we bring our community members together. So these are just some of the initiatives that we're focusing on. We're going to continue to offer small business assistance, which is extremely important. Um, even though you may be running your business and you may be flourishing right now, I'm not saying that you still can't find out more information. I think that's the growth, right? Even if you're a successful business owner and you're still trying to figure out ways of what to do next, how to be innovative, um, how to make sure that you're providing the best customer service, this small business assistance from the county will help you do that. And because you're partnering with Burlington County, we're expecting that you have that commitment to us just as we do you. So we're asking that you share our information on social media as well. We need you to partner with us to get the word out about all the services that we're providing to our residents. And lastly, what we're going to be doing is Burlington County will partner with the, the Burlington County Regional Chamber of Commerce. We're going to partner with them because we think it's important to bring both of our brands together to focus on making sure that we can provide as much information to our business owners as possible. So right now, our brands are siloed. We don't want that silo anymore. We want to create that connection. And when we create that connection, it will bring forth more information for our residents. So we are going to call ourselves the Burlington County Business Hub. That business hub will share additional information and it'll be a one-stop shop for our business owners here in Burlington County. So right now we're saying go to our website for the Burlington County Bridge to get this information. I'm telling you to go to the library to get additional resources for women. When we have that hub, you won't have to go to all of those different spots. We're going to create a one-stop shop for you for information because it's our goal to make sure that you succeed. We want you to succeed so we can have a flourishing Burlington County. Residents will be happy. We already believe it's the best place to live and work, but now we wanna put everybody's feet to the fire and make sure that we keep making Burlington County the best county in New Jersey. So that is all the information that I have to share with you this evening. And I want to thank you guys for giving me these few minutes. Thank you, Liz, for joining me. Great tag team effort. Um, and I'll, I'm going to stick around and hear what Christina has to say. So you guys know how to get in touch with us. And I thank you for these few minutes. And I look forward to being able to visit with you all in a face-to-face -face, face -face environment soon. So just hang in there. Stay safe. Wear your mask. And we'll be back to normalcy really soon. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you, Dr. Hobson. That was wonderful information. I know I learned a few things myself. Thank you, Liz Verna. Nice to see you again as well. Okay, now Christina Renna, who is the president and CEO of the Southern New Jersey Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome. We'd love to hear what you have to say tonight. Thank you so much, Stacy. I appreciate that introduction. I would like to start by saying good evening to everyone. My name is Christina Renna, and I am president and CEO of the South Jersey Chamber of Commerce. I would be remiss if I didn't start, of course, by thanking the fantastic Mayor Jackie VC for the invitation today, along with Deputy Mayor Cooper as well. And then, of course, Director Hobson, who, as you just heard, is just doing phenomenal things for Burlington County amid this terrible time we've been in. There has been no shortage of momentum in Burlington County, keeping a focus on the business community and trying to find any avenue out there possible to give assistance to these struggling businesses and restaurants. So kudos to you, Director Hobson. It's always a pleasure to work with you and share a virtual stage with you. So I appreciate being with you today. I'm gonna to go ahead and share my screen, see if I can do this. There we are. So you heard Director Hobson mention the Burlington County Regional Chamber of Commerce, and that is the Chamber of Commerce that is representing all Burlington County businesses, a phenomenal organization, a group that I partner with regularly um, on any matter of things. But I think it'll be interesting and maybe a good um, way for you to determine who we are as an organization and the benefits of our chamber and how we differ from the Burlington County Chamber by short, starting with a brief video about the South Jersey Chamber of Commerce that really talks about who we are and who we represent. So this is a very quick video. After we watch this video, we're going to talk about federal assistance programs and some updates to the PPP program and IDLE program, as well as some other programs that have just been announced and then talk very quickly about some state assistance programs, all for businesses, and we're gonna give you the most recent up, um, information as possible. But we're gonna start with this video so you know a little bit about who the South Jersey Chamber is and what we do. The chamber was started back in 1873. We were actually called the Camden Board of Trades and we were started by Kimball Soup Company and RCA. Since that time, we've evolved into what we are today, the Chamber of Commerce, Southern New Jersey. The chamber of Commerce of Southern New Jersey, hands down, is the top chamber in the state of New Jersey. The chamber is about developing relationships. It develops friendships and it develops long-standing business relationships for our South Jersey community. We provide about 150 events a year, which are all opportunities for people to come together and network with each other. The range of events that the Chamber has is innumerable. Some of them range from like smaller events that are more intimate, in addition to larger events that might be fun, right? Where you might make some long lasting friendships and build key relationships for business development. There's a quality professionalism about this place that I think makes it stand out above almost any other Chamber that I've been associated with. So the people you could expect to find at any one of the Chamber of Commerce of Southern New Jersey events are decision makers. They are leaders within their organizations. Our members have access to these people that they may not have ever had access to. And everyone from the governor to state senators and assembly people, mayors that are impactful in the region, we bring them to the table. We bring in the leaders of the legislature, the leaders of the various departments in the state, leaders of business, and that gets us information, it gets us access, it gets us a seat at the table. There's no question being a member of this chamber has helped to grow my business. It pays dividends for our business every day. There definitely is an opportunity to build your network, raise your bottom line, and come and find out what's happening in New Jersey. It is an organization that fights for advocacy, it fights for people, and it fights for our business community. The South Jersey Chamber has a strong presence in Trenton. They're advocates on behalf of the business community down in South Jersey. I can always count on the Chamber to give me honest advice, good counsel, and I'm proud to stand with them when we're trying to advocate on behalf of business interests. Our Chamber is one of the most effective chambers in the state. When you have an issue where you don't know where to turn, 
you can turn to the leadership of the chamber and you will find your, your avenue to get the answer. Our footprint is Burlington County all the way down to Cape May County and in that footprint we cover every industry that there is from our hospitals to our utility companies, the casinos, to higher education institutions. They're all members of our organization. Even though we do have all the heavyweights here in South Jersey and we are very fortunate to call them members, at the end of the day the real true backbone of our organization is the small businesses. We've been members for 20 years. We've been a member of this chamber for over 15 years. They ensure that my voice is heard. We're a constant force here in our state legislature, constant force in Trenton. It is professional, it is quality. If you're looking for an opportunity to really build strong partnerships for your organization, then the Chamber of Commerce of Southern New Jersey is where you want to be. You'll make business and relationships that will last a lifetime. We look forward to you becoming part of the chamber. Okay, so that's a little bit of background on who I am and the organization in which um, I run and very proud of the chamber. Um, sorry, I'm going to stop sharing and then start sharing again. And the real key piece that I really wanted to sh you to take away from that is the advocacy piece, because that's what we're here to talk about today. Our connections in Trenton and our connections within the federal government are um, what, uh, at the end of the day, helps us, sorry, helps us have this topical information for members um, at all times. And there's been a lot of new information coming out of Washington, especially with the new administration, that is some actually very good news for business. So I'm going to share my screen again, and we are gonna start from the beginning of the presentation. Sorry, give me one second here. Just to move this to the end. See if I can go on to the next slide. There we go. So we're gonna start with a big announcement that came down just this week, and it has to do with changes to the Paycheck um, Protection Program, the PPP loan program. I'm sure all of you tuning in today are more than familiar with the PPP. The administration in Washington took some steps this week that were really quite unprecedented and great for small businesses. So these changes went into effect actually yesterday. And what you see on this screen is a start of an overview of it. So for the next 14 days, which is now technically 13 days, really 12 days, if we're at the end of the second day here, um, any very small business, so 20 or fewer employees and or nonprofit have the ability to um, go back in and obtain additional PPP funds, apply for those funds, uh, extend this program until December of this year. So that should say, um, yes, December 31st of this year. So that was one change. Additionally, Paycheck Protection Program, um, as I said, they have added more money back into this program, but the clock is ticking. So in addition to all of those things I said on the outset, those brand new breaking news, very small business assistance programs that are out there for the federal government, if you don't fall in that category, things were also done to the PPP program to help you if you have 25 employees or 50 employees. Um, but the deadline to apply for PPP money, even if you already received it the first time around, is March 31st or when the money has expired. And as of Tuesday, I know for a fact in talking to my connections at the SBA that there was approximately 30 to $35 billion left. Um, so probably by now, let's call it 20, $25 billion left. Once this money is gone, you're not gonna be able to go in and reapply. So if you have a need, this is the time to do it before the money runs out. If the money doesn't run out, the deadline is March 31st. And again, you, you can go in and reapply if you had already received a PPP loan. Um, so that's not a deterrent, but that is something that this second iteration did. You can go back in and request more money, but you had to have used all of your first PPP loan um, before applying for a second dip. So there's some more information there on the screen about that. Something new that was um, also done back in December is the debt relief on SBA 7A, 504, and microloans. 
This is not something that if you fall into these categories, you actually have to do anything about. The federal government knows about you, you've already applied for assistance, and then this will automatically be provided to you. There's no need to apply or do anything. Um, federal government will automatically provide you with this, but again, it only impacts you if you have a 7A, 504, and or a micro loan. But there's nothing to be done on this. It's just additional relief that's going to come to you. And then there's something new is the tar targeted idle advance, which is a grant. It's approximately $1,000 per employee. Um, this was a program that existed last year. It did run out of money back in 2020. So after it ran out of money, there was a slew of people, as you can imagine, that applied for this. And what they are doing now in DC is they are going through the applications that they were not able to fulfill and tapping that stack of applications. So unfortunately, if you didn't apply previously, there's no ability to apply now. If you previously applied and were told you ran out of money, you may be in luck because they're going back through that stack of people and prioritizing low income applicants first um, for this grant money. So you will be invited to participate. Again, there is nothing you can do, unfortunately, as far as an application process, unless if you did not already apply. But so many people did apply for this, it could be some good news if you fall into that category. A new program that was created in December was the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. There's been a lot of questions around this and not a lot of guidance, candidly. So I've talked to a few business people, I should say more like restaurants that have live music capabilities that thought that maybe this is going to be a fit for them and unfortunately does not seem like it is going to be. The Shuttered Venue Operators Grant is really targeted towards something like your bb and Center in Camden a concert venue or a performing arts center. There are some carve outs for things like some museums, aquariums, movie theaters, but it does not seem like it's going to be a fit for a place that you have a wedding, for example, or a restaurant. So unfortunately, there's not been a lot of guidance out there, but the guidance that's, that is out there and exists is at this website that's on your screen. Looks like I have a typo in it. It's www.sba.gov slash, oh no, I don't have a typo. Tyco. SVO grant is where you find more information on that. But again, I think a lot of people were excited about that. And I unfortunately, I don't think it's going to fit a lot of businesses um, in our area. So key takeaways here that the PPP program, even if you already apply, you can apply for a second round up until March 31st or until the money is exhausted. And again, the money is getting close to being exhausted. Debt relief on SBA, 7A, 504, and microloans, it'll automatically happen. If you are in these categories and previously applied, you don't have to do anything, but it should, if, 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 if you fit this criteria, hopefully you'll be able to get it. Idle is open. The Idle Loan Program, again, that 3.75 fixed rate is open until December 31st of this year. The Target Idle Advance, which is the grant I mentioned earlier, you will be invited to participate in that if you already applied. And last but not least, stay tuned for more information on the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, but unfortunately, it does seem like it's more for larger concert venue type facilities. On the screen here is a list of different websites you can go to to get more information as well as email addresses. And if anyone needs this, I know Stacy said she would share my contact information. I am happy to provide any of this to you. Very quickly here, there have been some tax credits and changes on the federal government that could actually help businesses. The first is the Employee Retention Credit, the ERC. This is something that actually existed last year. They have extended it and broadened it. So now um, there is a refundable payroll tax credit for um, an amount up to 70% of a qualified wages in your company. It's capped at $10,000 per employee and it was extended through July 1st of 2021. So this is a tax credit that could benefit businesses of all sizes, small, medium, and I think you have to have under 500 employees to take advantage, but this is a great program as well. As the paid sick and family leave credit, this is another credit that is a refundable tax credit equal to 100% of qualified sick leave wages paid by an employer um, for up to 500 employees. Now, unfortunately, the ERC I just talked about and the paid sick leave, family leave credit, you can't get both. You can only get one. 
So it's best for you to talk to your lawyer or whoever, your accountant, and find out which one is going to make you the most money and if you're going to be eligible and then take it from there. But again, um, two tax credit programs that are worth exploring if you're a business. And then last but not least, in the federal government, um, they did come out and say that PPP loan proceeds are going to be forgiven and not subject to federal income tax. Um, that was a big step forward and great news for businesses. In great news, additionally, New Jersey, Governor Murphy has come out and said that they are going to mirror that rule and not tax um, any income that was coming through PPP loan proceeds. So again, I've had questions from members that are starting to do their taxes. There's the answer to the question. Great news for anyone who's received a PPP loan. On the state side of the equation, um, a few programs are still out there. We have the Small and Micro Business PP Access Program. This um, is run through the New Jersey Economic Development Authority and offers discounts for businesses to obtain PPE, your masks, your hand sanitizer, your plexiglass, whatever you need. Um, the application period did reopen February 16th. But uh, this is a great program. I will tell you, our chamber applied for it and got it ourselves, and we are utilizing it. Um, PPP is very costly for businesses, especially those that are struggling. So this is a great program stood up in the state. Additionally, there's a small business emergency loan program. Now, as many of you may recall, the state also stood up grant programs last year in addition to the loan programs. The grant programs are oversubscribed. There are no more grants available at this time. However, there is money allocated for a loan program. That being said, they were getting ready to launch this and then they hit the pause button on it because they wanna see what ends up happening with the PPP round two launch, which as of this week, we've gotten more information on that. So still remains to be seen what's gonna happen with this EDA loan program, um, but it is stood up and ready to hit send. They just paused on it to see what the federal government was gonna come up with first. So I expect some information coming out of the state on this program probably sometime in the coming weeks. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back. There we go. Sustain and Serve New Jersey program is a $2 million grant program that encourages business to buy from New Jersey-based restaurants. Again, a really creative program that EDA has stood up. And last but not least, the NJRA Small Business Lease Emergency Assistance Grant Program, if you are eligible, helps small businesses with their rent payments, a huge issue for so many small businesses. I will very quickly just end on the fact that the governor did give his budget address on Tuesday of this week. In good news for the business community, there was no proposed tax increase as something that we really cannot sustain under the circumstances of the pandemic. So very good news coming out of Trenton as it relates to tax increases, new or increased fees. The legislature is has proposed a $300 million brand new grant and loan program to help businesses with 50 or fewer employees. So this is gonna to have to move through the legislative process. You're going to have to have the bill move through the General Assembly, then through the Senate and land on Governor Murphy's desk and for him to agree to sign it. But it has been drafted and been introduced and you have commitments already from Senate President Steve Sweeney and Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin that they are committed to moving this legislation, which is a very good sign. So these, these are the kinds of programs that us at the South Jersey Chamber, we regularly testify on, weigh in on, monitor, and advocate for on behalf of our business community. This $300 million grant and loan program in New Jersey is sorely needed, and we are hopeful that that is something that will move forward. My last slide here is just a little more, bit more coming back to the video you saw about our chamber. Um, the CCSNJ has so many different resources available to our members as it relates to COVID. So we have a COVID resource center that has everything from legal and accounting advice to um, all the information I talked about today to member services that are being uh, avail made available. And you see our CCSNJ resource center is where you can find any up-to-date information about any of the things I just spoke to you about. So really comprehensive resources available that members can just simply click on our website and hopefully get at their fingertips the, the, the information they need. Last but not least, we are, again, a very policy-driven organization. And in May of last year, we did put forth the South Jersey Economic Reopening and Recovery Plan that did prioritize South Jersey for a reopening of its economy first. This was presented to Governor Murphy and his team, the legislature, and many other local leaders. 
Um, we're very proud of that plan. Unfortunately, Governor Murphy still believes in a one size fits all approach to opening and closing the economy. But we are currently in the process of our next research report, which is preparing for the next normal and what our business community needs that maybe is some creative, innovative ideas that we can present to Governor Murphy for him to adopt to help make that transition back to normalcy in a post-pandemic world easier for the business community. So that's something we're working on now. Here is my contact information. That was a lot of information. I tried to get through it as quickly as possible, but please take down my email address, my phone number. Our website is on the screen. I'm always happy to try to answer any questions you may have. There's a lot more details in all the information I just said, but I wanted to keep it as high level and get through it as much as possible. So with that, Stacey, I will turn the program back over to you, but thank you for the opportunity to be with you this evening. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was so, it was a lot of information. It was wonderful. I thank you for sharing that. We are excited to share that with the ESHM community. What you shared, what Director um, Hobson shared, what Liz Verna shared, it was an exciting night, I think. Um, so I thank you all for your time um, that you took to put the information together and sharing it this evening. Um, my last thing is what next? And I wanted to just share this with everyone really quickly is to have the contact information. This will be on our website. You can always contact me and I can put you in touch with the correct people um, based on tonight's webinar. Um, I will put you in touch with um, Liz Berna. So in lieu of reaching out or trying to reach out to Commissioner Hobson to ask her about what was discussed tonight, reach out to Liz Verna. She will have information to you. She will direct you appropriately. Um, and I have her information listed. For Christina Renna, the president and CEO of the uh, Chamber of Commerce for Southern New Jersey, that was such, such great information and it was a lot. Um, and I'm hoping that our um, audience will reach out to you directly. But if there's a question that they want to contact me with, please feel free. Um, again, you have Christina's, um, Christina Renna's information. It will be on our website and it will be posted tomorrow on our social media site. That is all that I had. I, my next page, I will have just some um, links for everyone to go to. Um, I will make sure that they're updated so that they um, recognize the COVID-19 um, and that they have the exact website and the email address, or excuse me, the website addresses that you should um, go to. Then I just want to say thank you again for, um, for your time, for those that are watching, for your attention uh, this evening. Everyone, thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. I appreciate you. Good night.